Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And so the energy shifts yet again. In the process of channeling, there is an element of trust. I chose a man to channel who likes to have things prepared in advance. A very linear thinker who would have to delinearize his mind and understand that the only thing that he knows in advance is that he will not know anything in advance. The words that I speak now are not known to him a moment before they're spoken. And so there is no target message unless I tell him in advance what it will be. Or unless I tell him there will be a repeat of information that is then enhanced. Here is a time where he has no idea what is coming. And that is most of the time. And so what you have in this paradigm and this example is a quantum experience in the now, is it not? Where you walk from place to place, not even having a goal, but being accepting that what you're doing has purpose for the planet, even though you do not see it. I have said this before, dear human being, that your very existence as a light worker is good enough. Without a goal, without a project, is good enough. That there is a process that takes place between you and your energy and that of the crystalline grid that is enough. And that the very aspect of your life being lived one day at a time helps the planet when you complete yourself with compassion. It is therefore the compassionate attribute of your mind and what you do with it day by day which is changing the very future. How will you react to all paradigms, young person? Can you strike a balance between the wisdom of honoring what is there and changing what you can? And those who are conceptual will know this. For it is the linear mind who will go up against a force and expect it to bend. It is the conceptual mind who will go around the force <laughs> and change it from the back. <laughs> And so there are ways and means of approaching those that you have never approached because you didn't think you could. There is a way of living where they will approach you when they see the compassion that you have. Where those perhaps you have not talked to in years who have not accepted you for what you believe will see you differently because you stop telling them anything and listening to them compassionately because they can see you're interested in their life and not interested in converting them. These are the paradigm shifts, dear human being, that you're starting to see on a day-by-day -day basis. If you can title a series or a channeling, I will do so. This is not going to be an endurance channel. <laughs> we wish to give you information and energy this day. I would like to start a series called The Incredible Human Being. And I'll start it with a simple one. Honoring of history. Not your history. But that of the higher self inside you. A history of the kind that you don't hear much about. And if I could subtitle it would be how we see you. We've given information how God sees humanity. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how we see you now. Right now. 
If you could see what we see, it would change everything. You'd change your attitude about who you are, who humans are, what you've done and where you're going. We see with eyes that have millennium in them all at once. We do not see in this time frame like you do a moment at a time as you hear this, as you might read this, later. We see instead a snapshot of all the lives that you are, of all the things that might have happened that you are, and what you did even before you got here. That's how we see you. We see you as both eternal and a piece of God, the creative energy, and as the human that you are. That's how we see you. And the history that is here is amazing. And although we have said some of these things before, I wish to lay it out yet again. A carpet of honor rolled down the middle aisle for you to appreciate. And I bring you this, the message of the history of humanity differently than you've ever heard it before. You can't start it where you think it started. Humans like you appeared 200,000 years ago and that's not very long. And you're different than the evolution of the planet. There are those who have seen it, there are those who will see it. The finer the instruments become, the more you'll be aware that there is no missing link because you are separate and completely different from the other mammals on the earth. No animal, no mammal is like you. Your DNA reeks with a message that it's not from here. And we've told you this before and we, we challenge the scientists to see it. Find the fusing the 23 instead of the 24, all of the things that show you something happened. And it is not through normal evolutionary processes. It's counterintuitive to evolutionary processes. And that's where we're going to start. Now I want to paint a picture for you so that you will understand something very critically. You are the new kid on the block in your galaxy. Right now. As I speak, something is happening. I cannot reveal to you the details of it, for it is not clear even to us, for it is simply unraveling as it will. The energies of potentials are at work right now doing something very special. Before I tell you what it is, even in a language my partner is not understanding yet, let me review those who seated you. We've spoken of the seven sisters and we've spoken of the Pleiadians and there'll come a time when humanity will see the potential of this being real instead of mythology or something odd. When they take a look at the biology and when they get the invention that is coming it will change everything. We have no clock. We cannot tell you when it's coming, but we will tell you this, that when you are able to manipulate, create, sustain quantum energy on this planet, you'll have the invention that will change humanity forever and you will mark the beginning of your civilization from that point. For in this quantum energy that you will be able to create technically, you will then be able to tune in on the galaxy and you'll be able to hear the others. For they are also tuned in to one another in a quantum state. They know who you are and you will then know who they are. And rather than fear gripping the planet, there will be a release and a relief and a rewrite perhaps even of spiritual systems. And the rewrite will honor God but in a different way. 
The rewrite will understand that the mythology of the garden and the talking snake really are representative of a creative energy when it was time, when humans needed it. The reality of light and dark was given to you just in the allegory, but in a different way. That's your history. Those who planted the seeds on this planet of divinity in you did it after their change came a million years before yours. Imagine a civilization on this planet a million years from now in a graduate status. What would it be like? What would you learn? What could you do? All of these things, it is far beyond your scope of imagination. How can you explain something you don't know? How can I talk to George Washington about the internet? <laughs> when he doesn't know about electricity or a computer. One thing leads to another. Inventions build upon themselves in such a way that if you're not familiar with the grounding of where they came from and how they developed, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. Suffice it to say, that one thing leads to another and truth reveals itself and over generations humans change. It took a million of your, your, of your earth years for the Pleiadians to have a, the ability to seed this planet. 200,000 years ago they did it. 100,000 before that is when life began on this planet in a significant way and I'm not going to give you what significant way is that led to you. Now here is what I'm talking about. There is a plan, a process of what we will call galactic evolvement where certain populations in certain star systems become aware. And the power that is created from that awareness builds upon itself and accelerates until they're able to actually create themselves in a quantum energy where life itself can be bottled in a quantum energy. Transportation is instant. All of these things, it is a meld between biology and technology that I cannot explain to you. It is not robotic. It is the human being being able to create with help from technology that they create with inside them. Difficult to explain. My partner is not getting the picture. He cannot any more than George Washington got the internet. So let us just say that it existed. When the Pleiadians were at a state where we knew what they would do, where they knew what they would do, this planet started to change in preparation for them. You might say they passed a marker in their evolvement. Now here's what I want to tell you, human being. You're passing a marker right now. It has the potential of their marker a long time from now. But things take a long time to evolve on certain kinds of planets depending upon the sustainability of certain kinds of life. Right now I would like to tell you what is going on somewhere else in your galaxy. It is the beginning of those you will seed. There will come a time when you will fill the role that the Pleiadians filled with you. And what we want to tell you, which you may find hard to believe, is that you were there in the Seven Sisters as Pleiadians, and now you're here as humans, and you will also be part of the next phase. It is endless. <laughs> and you've got the time for it. The plan has that which is energetic and divine sweeps over the galaxy and changes its physics. It changes who it is and what it is. It changes the universe. There is a larger picture at hand. 
And those that you would call, for instance, those that are not Pleiadian, and you would wonder what their role is in the galaxy, and you've talked to them, and you've named them, and books are written about them. I want to tell you, they are the forerunners of the Pleiadians. They seated each other. That's how that worked. That's the history of humanity. If you could see what we see, the Akashic record that is inside your DNA is earth-based only. It doesn't go back any further than that. That's an honor of the biology and Gaia. It's an honor of the cave of creation. No matter how good your past life reader is, she's not going to read you as a Pleiadian. <laughs> he might do something different, he, she, and say so, but it's not there to read. It is not there to read. So the history of humanity is longer than you think. But if you could see what we see, it starts 200,000 years ago. By 100,000 years, you were like you are now. The other kinds of human beings left. There were at least 17 kinds, just like all the mammals of the planet create variety, and you didn't. Have you ever thought about it? There's only one kind of human being. That is counterintuitive to all of evolution that creates variety. There's only one kind, many colors, but one kind. If you take a look at that, there is an indictment right there that you are not part of earth evolvement. There is no missing link unless you want to go to the Seven Sisters. <laughs> and that's where you'll find it. And that's where we started talking to you. Dear ones, we see your history from both sides of the veil. How it is when we talk to you before you come in, what we say energetically, what the feelings are, and what you're about. The incredible human being. In the old energy, how do you think it felt, dear one, to be part of divinity and the plan of knowing everything that I know on the other side of the veil, poised and ready to come in? Knowing full well that when you arrived as a human being, you have lost almost everything. All knowledge of who you are, all knowledge of God, all you knew is that you wanted to go home. <laughs> all you knew, you, you find all your life, you search for that which loves you, if you noticed, all your life. And they'll become, those come along and invite you into their box. But it doesn't satisfy you. If it's true your own, you're your own ancients, think about the energies and the things you went through. Willingly. Knowing full well, on my side of the veil, that when you arrived, you might not last very long. Life's lifespan was short. <laughs> so many of those old souls in the room died on the battlefield. Do you know that? You had to. Because that's what humanity did. By the hundreds of thousands. How many of you died with plague in the room? Most. You've gone through the waves of humanity and every single time you came back and we looked at you and said, you're doing it again. And you said, yeah. What are the potentials of that? Why would you do that? That's the incredible human being. That is the history we see. Because you see the, con the conceptual part of what you're doing as part of a big picture that takes you someplace. And I'll tell you where it takes you. It takes you to now. Where you have against all odds created the marker that you're going to pass. On your way to creating something that no one has predicted. Except those on the other side of the veil who see the energy I see. There is celebration on my side of the veil as you push toward this marker. Humans have free choice. You can change it on a dime. But the potentials are exactly the ones I saw 20 years ago when I said hello to my partner. And I said consciousness is shifting. Weather is shifting. You're not going to be the same as you were yesterday. There is no returning to normal. Because normal is old. Normal is old. 
Your country is in a state right now where you're begging to have this over with, are you not? To have the economy you used to have. And for those of you who sit and listen and read who are Americans, you long for the time before the economy went into the dumper, as you would say. How would you feel if I told you there is no going back? Instead, there is a reworking and a recalibration of normal. And it will pull itself out after some other things happen that you don't expect. You've got to recalibrate the system, the very systemic things that you think are the base points of what makes you who you are as an economy, as a country, are going to change. And that's good news. For it's going to change to the better. There's going to be more transparency. And you knew this. I want to tell you the last thing that I, on the other side of the veil, I, I saw. Oh, dear ones, how do I explain this? I have said this before so many times. Your history, you know what we see as your history? I'm going to put it into two, into two places here. and I've done this before. I want, to, I want to put it into two parts. Number one, I want to talk to the seniors. And the second, I want to talk to the young people. The seniors in the room, when you came into this planet, this lifetime, and said goodbye to us, it hadn't changed any. You were heading for a decision point that had you burned alive by nuclear war. And the prophets told you, and your scriptures told you, and it was written in many places, even the ancients gave you the potential. This would be it. It's over. You failed. You had the weaponry. You had the attitude. And it was on its way. And you came in. That's the history we see. Why would you do that? I've given you this information before, but perhaps not in this succinct way. Why would you do that? And I'll tell you that because there was a potential that down the line, thousands of lifetimes of raising your consciousness would eventually pay off today. And it has. And it's only been 25 years that you turned it around. And now you're sitting on something that even you did not expect, senior. You've got the potential for extended life. You've got the potential for peace on the planet, for turning things around in a way that your parents said you couldn't. Why did you come here when you thought you were going to die? And I'll tell you, that is because on the other side of the veil, you have the mind of God. My mind. You see the concepts, you see the potentials, you see those around you you don't even know exist. You see the cheering section you don't know exists. You feel the energy of love that even some of you in the room don't know exists. Right now I want to invite the entourage in, even before it's time to close, to sit in the aisles and stand there as I make pronouncements and I say you have no idea how honored you are. You're going to do it. That's the potential. It's never changed, senior. Now, to the young person. You come in an energy that is brand new. It was not expected. And when I said goodbye to you as an old soul from my side of the veil to this one, I said, as odd as it might seem, you're the one that's going to have to do the hardest work. Paradigm shift comes with a price. And I said yesterday in a private channeling a word, and we're going to give it to you now. And you're going to remember it because it's funny. 
And it's going to be the paradigm that you're going to have to live with and work with it and we're going to call it suck. <laughs> Slow, uncomfortable change. Slow, uncomfortable change. And that's because there is no total, complete collapse and failure in sight. Now that can change. That's how we see you. So the young person in the room is going to have to deal with something that the senior did not. One foot in the old energy, one foot in the new, straddling it with wisdom and patience. And by the way, senior, that's not what you did in the 60s. You blasted forth. Didn't do any good. It's different today. How do we see you? The incredible human being, the history that is here, 200,000 years, that's nothing. Don't you find it odd? We've seen this before. Why don't you find it odd that the, that the Earth is as, as old as the galaxy is, it's all the same age, that it took this long for humans to appear? You might see as a giant hand holding everything back. The actual start of microbial life started five times before they got it right, millions and millions of years. While other worlds had their civilizations, you were looking at amoebas trying to get it right. Photosynthesis occurred, last minute, saved the day. You start looking at the biology of the planet and the history of planet, it doesn't really make sense that you'd be last minute with an earth this old to have humanity happen only at the last possible moment is counterintuitive. It's part of a plan. I'll say it again, there's someone else, somewhere else, starting right now. Because you passed the marker. It's the same scenario and they'll be the new kid on the block next. And yes, I'll sit in front of them. If and when they change the consciousness of their world like you have. How do I see you? All of these times that you've come in, it's such an honor to sit with family. Your parents knew of this day. Did you know that? On my side of the veil, they looked at the potentials and they saw that they could be. They were not the strongest, but they could be. They came into the planet, we've said this before, knowing that they would probably meet one another. The synchronicity would create the seed, which is you. That some of them would give you a bad time. Some of them would die early. They wouldn't be very enlightened and that you'd pass the torch. How does that make you feel? I'm looking at it right now because I see the potential of the unborn. I see your potential next time. I've told some of you what you're going to do. That's the history. I want to give you the big picture and I just did. That's what we see. That's what we see. The incredible human being. The history that is not the reality that you see but the reality we see is a family member who has changed the very fabric of the galaxy through eons of time. What some of you would call sacrifice. There is a system here that you don't know about and you don't understand and you wouldn't agree with. There's 200,000 human beings that we faced off with, almost 300,000 human beings, before they came in and we told them this. You're going to come in and there's going to be a purpose you're going to achieve and it's not going to be pleasant, but it's going to change the planet forever. 
And some of you are going to be kids. And when the earthquake happens and the waters come in, you're going to drown. And the world will turn its eyes upon you and there will be a compassionate wave that will change the crystalline grid forever and push this planet even closer toward that, which is what we call peace on earth. And you said, I'm going. And they said, I'm going. That's the history we see. That's your history. What I just told you is that some things, but the t potentials are known. The cycle that you see of weather before you has created the volcanoes, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, and there is the potential of where you live. You know the rest of the story. Crying, are you telling me they knew about it in advance? Not as humans. But I'm not talking about human history. I'm talking about humans as we see them on both sides of the veil. That's the incredible human. And they came anyway. And they accomplished what they accomplished and they did. Based off of the human being. There's a potential you're going to die in a way that you can never even imagine. So horrible. Falling from the 81st floor by design, you're going to jump. <laughs> and they did. Along with a couple of thousand others. And you know what I mean. For the potential of 9-11 was known, very well known, and it took place on schedule. And there will be those even here who would not understand this, but I speak to you in metaphysical ways, compassionate ways, that one event put compassion on this planet within moments of its knowing all around the world and that moved the earth and the crystalline grid was changed yet again the outpouring of compassion because of what those scenes showed will never be forgotten and changed everything and the irony is that it took terrorism to create it. <laughs> now that is an old energy. And that is what's going away. What I'm telling you, dear human being, is that the old paradigms, even the dark ones, have come together to create a confluence of positive change on this planet. Sometimes you take two steps. Sometimes you take one. Sometimes it's two forward and one back. But at the end of the day, you cross the marker. I give you this information even as advanced as it may be, so that all will hear it and know there is a plan, that you come in willingly. Now, turn the page and we're going to close. Old souls did not come here to die. <laughs> Old souls need to stay on the planet. The ones in this room need to stay here. Extend the life as much as you can. Using what we give you. Using the new inventions that are coming your way. Not drawing a demarcation line between that which is science and that which is religious or spiritual. And using everything with discernment that will extend your life. Be circumspect and wise and know that some of these things that you would call science are directly from the Creator, <laughs> given to you to save your life. We need your light and we need you to stay. 
I speak to the room. I speak to those who would tune in and listen to this or read these words. The very footsteps on the planet of your wisdom changes all. Slowly and incrementally you are needed. And when you leave, you'll return. I'll tell you why you're going to return. Because you're going to return with a different instinct of humanity. You're going to return with the knowledge that you've learned this time around and you will awaken early by yourselves. You will not have to go through what you've gone through this time. Isn't it nice to hear that? It will be instinct that you are a piece of the Creator. This is new and it's called the evolution of DNA. I've given you much here, some of what I gave before, some of which is new in a package I wanted you to hear. Why I as Cryon and those around me are in love with you. If you could see what we see, you would know exactly why we feel like we do. You can't, and you won't, for it is all hidden from you in certain ways so that free choice will be yours to make without the influence of second and third and fourth and fifth sight. And that even makes it more special when we look at you and we say, even without what we know, you walk the path. And you trust the path. And you love the unseen. And that is good enough for us. It's working. Do not be dismayed by things that seem to go backwards that might occur. See them in the grander scheme of a longer time frame that marches forward slowly to a marker where you will have peace. It is in the works. How soon? I cannot tell you. For it will develop as it develops and be created through your free choice. But the ball is unstoppable. That's where it's going. And that's what we wanted to tell you. Not filled with information as much as it is filled with gratitude, with love, with purpose. We want you to know when you leave, you're not alone. You can't be. It's impossible. We're there with you the whole time. We wouldn't have it any other way. And so it is.